Josh Moon, welcome to the Fuck Cozy Festival. How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing good. So how's the last month? Last time we talked, of course, I think it was the day after or the day of, right when I got back from Florida uh, from all the drama. Uh, so have you been following any of this stuff, or what are your thoughts on what's transpired the last month? Um, it's it's pretty shocking, like how fast I think things have fallen apart even further. Because Flintez was already kind of like in a trough, like as far as like his career goes, and it's kind of surprising to see that. Um, that's something he considered sort of like a, I think he already considered he like a write-off from for months, and then you drop out, and it gets it gets a lot worse for him very quickly, and that's pretty impressive. Well, yeah, and I you know um I, I think that um you know me dropping out and then some of his other people going against him kind of um opened the floodgates a little bit. You know he's still around, uh, but he's been catching a lot of heat from all corners, uh, and people really digging in on him. Um. I don't really see it getting any better. Um, do, do you see him being able to, you know, his play now is to, uh, I guess, try to mainstream himself or, you know, get on these shows like Fresh and Fit and Valuetainment and all that. Uh, do you see any upper trajectory for him there? Hard to say because, you know, shit happens and sometimes people get a lucky break. He could get a lucky break with one of these shows that he's trying to get appearances on. Um, it's just a question of how that how that converts uh for his existing audience and what he's trying to do because if he's just trying to make money to get by like he just wants to be a professional streamer giving you know like lukewarm takes on shit he probably can accomplish that and be okay but as far as being like the nick fuentes that people actually know him as right now um it's a little bit early but that's probably toast that's probably done in i don't think he can recover his image with the audience that he was trying to cultivate in the past yeah and, and i agree with you um you know if he just you know wants to be a streamer i think he probably you know would be able to keep enough support to do that you know he still makes money and all that but as far as being like an actual political figure or in politics or you know you, you know how the gripers talk they think this guy's gonna be president uh and all this wild shit um i, I don't see any i don't really see any future in that um do you think there's any chance of him you know breaking out politically no <laughs> well you know what it's just well, it's, I, it's brutal like real politics is, is real fucking brutal and you have to be squeaky clean and he, there is so much that he said that could piss off absolutely everybody i just now i saw a clip for the first time just just today and i, I don't know if it's recent or it could be really old he has a pumpkin on his desk yeah and he's going on for five minutes five whole consecutive minutes one after the other talking about how he's going to rape somebody and then once he gets out of jail, he's going to rape them again. And it was pretty funny. I got to admit, it was it was fucking hysterical because he said that the guy wore cat ears and therefore that justified that was him asking for him to be raped by Nick Fuentes. And it was pretty funny. But um, I, I, I assume that he was in on the joke. I don't know when this was, but it's like you, you can pull a million of these clips out on Nick Fuentes. And it's uh, like it's going to put off a lot of people. Yeah, and I saw the clip we played it the other day. I know exactly what you're talking about, and it's funny because he was talking. It's this dude named Rose Wist, uh, Ro wait, Rose Wrist or something like that. I don't know, uh, but uh, he's a European and he's bisexual. Uh, and Fuentes goes on and on for like five minutes about about raping him, and like you said, then raping him again. Uh, and it's it made me think of I don't know if you remember this, but I hosted a debate with him and Sticks, and Sticks actually wore the cat ears, but I didn't hear that kind of <laughs> that kind of diatribe about Sticks. Uh, I don't know. It was, it was a very strange. Sticks ain't this type. <laughs> You're right. That's what I'm saying, right? Like he he wasn't thinking that about sticks, um, but it was it was really just weird. Uh, it is kind of funny on a certain level. It's funny because it's so just like bizarre and homoerotic, right? Like it's like what the fuck uh, even is this? Uh, but there's a there's a million clips like that, and um, you know that's even leaving aside the the Heiling and, and all that stuff, and I love Hitler and all that. Um, just just really strange, really weird. I mean, he's a weird dude, Josh. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I. I, I don't really know uh, that he's all there, um, and I, that could lead me to this to this next point. Um, how have you felt about him traditionally over the years? Of course, everybody knows I was rolling with him there for a while, um, but I feel like after he and I had some of these thoughts even before I left. Um, but it seems like he's taken a real uh, nosedive uh, in in terms of like his mental health. I don't want to go full you know psychoanalyst here, um, but uh, if you look like when he got banned from Twitter, when he got banned from YouTube. Um, the rhetoric really went off uh, the deep end. Of course, they're January 6th, too. There's some questions about, you know, uh, did he turn state's evidence and all that stuff? That could have something to do with it. But what what have your thoughts been on him traditionally and, and how they kind of uh, shifted? When he was very young, I was sort of impressed by, like, his audacity just to get out there and say shit that he, that he wants to say. And he was making a lot of public appearances, too, and that was also impressive that he would just get out. And even to this day, if you watch, like, his intro to his streams, he shows footage of him, like, out with people, and those are all old clips. They're not new. He hasn't done that recently. 
Um, so just just for like his audacity to like go out there and talk, it, it was kind of a mixture of uh, just him, you know, being impressed with him specifically, but it was also like really, um, I guess, white pilling. It gave it gave some optimism for the future that you had young people like him and his audience, which were also young, who were willing to become politically active in a very you know conservative way that challenged you know uh, certain narratives and stuff. That that was that was I, I was never like a fan of his, but when I saw uh, certain clips of his, you know, he he was impressive. And um, the the very first time I remember thinking, "What the fuck is he doing?" was with the Catholic Cami shit, and that you know that derailed a lot of, of like his his traction and stuff. But um, if it was just that, it would probably be like one faux pas. But he he continually does stupid shit that makes you wonder what the fuck he's doing. Um, and then it really, I think everything really fell apart after January six, because not only <clears throat> did he not really accomplish anything. But he uh, abandoned a lot of his own, a lot of his own audience. I've gotten emails from people who have served time in federal prison who are registered felons now because they attended Nick Fuentes's rally and did what he asked them to do. While Nick Fuentes himself fucked off and disappeared. Um, so I, for that reason, I have an incredible contempt for Nick Fuentes. Uh, and then everything he's done since January 6 has been pitiful. He just does his streams. He doesn't leave his fucking house. He doesn't do anything of note. His rallies are. Uh, unprofessional is generous. Uh, the last rally he did didn't have audio for ten minutes, and then the the I, I genuinely believe that even though he had a, a mic with like a, a proper cord and everything, that they were recording off the microphone audio on like the laptop on the tech cart that was in the audience. It was just embarrassing. Um, so yeah, like his entire shit has fallen apart. I don't, I really don't think that he knows what he wants anymore. And I think that his main fault is that he sort of resents his his audience. I think that he. Um, after the Catboy Cami stuff, he started to, to be angry towards people that should be like his natural allies. Because like I'm getting, I'm eating shit for the Catboy Cami stuff, and people should be, you know, respecting me for um, my my political takes, my conservatism. And he's he's um, always allowed that sort of resentment to build up, and now he has no interest in catering to that audience anymore. It hasn't gotten him what he wants. He doesn't see a future with it. He's not making money with it. So now he's trying to figure out a way to break off, like you said, mainstream and. Um, sort of reinvent himself as as what i don't i don't fucking know i really don't know what he's trying to do he's just trying to do something i think yeah and i agree and you hit on something of course you hit on a few things i'm going to circle back around to those eventually but um it's clear and i've said this on the show uh, many times over the last month um uh, but it's clear that he kind of hates his job right uh and he kind of hates what he's doing and i know part of it you know is you know i originally thought it was a stick when he's you know being so mean to his super chatters and talking all this shit. uh but i don't think that anymore um i, I think he actually has uh disdain uh for his supporters and like you said he feels like it, it hasn't got him where it needs to you know have taken him and um i I don't know. It's just it's it's just off putting. Once you see it, you can't really not see it, right? Um, and so I I don't really know, um, you know, if he ever comes out of that, right? Like I I don't know. It's just um, you know I've had periods, and I, you probably have too, where maybe things aren't going how you want them to go, or or the show's a little, you know, it's it's a albatross sometimes. Um, but even during those times, you know, I'm always thankful uh, for the support because it keeps me. <laughs> alive basically right um but it, it seems like he just really has an extreme disdain uh for his audience and you mentioned the j6 stuff um i've i've gotten some commu communications like that and i saw bake post some stuff today uh why do you think he uh is like that towards his supporters uh who who went to jail on january 6th uh when he could easily you know he's Predicious uh, in terms of you know raising money for himself at least, um, you know he could easily do some type of fundraiser for these people. He could easily uh, you know say, hey, we got to support our guy. I mean that's what you're supposed to do, right? Support your guys who went to jail. Like that's that's in any walk of life or any activism or the mob even, right? They support their people who went to jail. Um, you know speculation maybe because he's you know fed or or scared to be associated uh, with that. Yeah. What, what do you think the reason? He doesn't, is he doesn't have to explicitly be like a, a, an informant that's like barred by some contract with the government to not interfere with like the trial processes for all the, the people who are being convicted. Um, he could just be genuinely afraid to further meddle in that because he already feels like the, you know, the sort of Damocles is hanging over him. So he doesn't want to further, you know, entrench himself in the January 6th stuff. He wants to get out of it like as unscathed as possible. That's what I, I feel. Um, the alternative is also a great, I would say it's like 50, 50 in terms of either he is afraid to do it or he just doesn't care. He doesn't feel any obligation to do it, and he doesn't really give a fuck about what's happened to people who, um, who are in in jail because of him. Uh, it's kind of like the probably 
feels that way about that Trump quote about what he said about McCain. Uh, people, someone asked him about McCain, <laughs> his time in the military and his POW status. And Trump said, I like winners. I don't like losers. And it probably feels that way. I like winners. I don't need losers in jail uh, being my supporters. Yeah, I think, and I knew exactly what quote <laughs> you're about to bring up too. Um, I, I I don't know. It's just it's just really bizarre, and I, I think you know it could be fed or it could just be you know fear, but it could also be he just doesn't care uh, about anybody else. Uh, and I've kind of seen that streak in him. Um, you know, like I said, even before I left Cozy, uh, even before all this uh, stuff blew up. Um, you know, the Alex Jones interview, the Ali Alexander stuff, the war on the age of consent, which is just bizarre. And, you know, when Bouch did it, everybody was calling him a pedo. Uh, and, you know, for good reason, right? Like, that's just a very weird. There's no great movement in the United States uh, for lowering the age of consent, right? Like, this is just a bizarre um, talking point and, and sick, really. Um, I, I think he has a real streak of just not caring about what his commentary uh, does to those around him. Uh, and even before, you know, I had the personal issues with him. Uh, and then, you know, we, you know, went into a lot of other stuff that ended up coming out. Um, I was, I, I had a thought in my head. And it's like, this guy just really doesn't care how his actions affects his allies at all. No. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's probably safe. But as far as like the age of consent, I have a feeling, I have a weird feeling that he just really hates women, like as a general, like contempt because he has a sister and he has a, and his mother and he never talks about either of them. I just feel like he really just hates women. He could be gay because he he could be like in a weird asexualness just because he hates women so, so much he doesn't want to be around them. It, um, really, it does shine through. Go ahead if you're going to say something else. No, um, it wasn't worth that. It's just I really think that his whole thing about age of consent is that he sees sex as purely transactional. He has that like that motivation to like have a family because that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, to have kids because that's what you know a leader does like, a great leader is like genghis khan and has a bunch of kids so he sees himself as like needing to do that uh but it's like purely a, a facetious thing that he does for wants to do for appearance if he even does you know for appearances um but as far as like i also have a feeling that he has like a, an obsession with purity because he's if he's an or, or bulimic then he has like an eating disorder um you know th there are there are guys who have like ocd who are like super obsessed with cleanliness i don't know if he's one of those hand sanitizer types that washes his hands continuously i have a feeling that he is i could be wrong um but he could just be like i want someone who's like super super young because then i know that she's like clean and that's something that he's probably concerned with and that's just um how i how he comes across he comes across as like a very neat ocd hand-wringing gay now uh, you talked well i talked about the age of consent thing and, and you hit on a little bit there too um what what do you think about the the snowflake gang uh or as they've been dubbed because they put snowflakes next to their name on twitter i think you did a thread on it on qb farms um what are your thoughts um you know when i when i first i was still on cozy and i heard him saying that stuff about the 16 year old bride and i remember going out there and being like oh he's joking like he's kidding uh and then you know there was commentary after that where it's clear like that wasn't really a joke uh right like it wasn't really a joke uh and it was almost a signal uh to his base you know i've come to think right uh and you see these groupers repeating his talking points and um uh, then the you know basically openly pedophilic ones um you know posting all this weird shit and talking about they want child uh sex and all this stuff uh yeah what well, do you what to do be you clear about? The, the snowflake thing, there's a group of like a lollycon obsessed people that are explicitly pro Fuentes, explicitly pro America first, and they're extremely easy to find. And you um, you go on Twitter, you find Nick Fuentes' sock account, whatever the fuck he's calling himself today, whatever Apple he's parading right. around as. And you, go, you look at his likes, find some anime avatars, open them up in new tabs. You will almost always like see just lollycon shit and tweets about wanting to fuck 12 year olds. And it's just explicit on the nose. Like these are pedophiles, and they're also Nick Fuentes' uh, greatest fans. And I could believe, uh, for something I'll, I, I'd like to, to mention later on, I could believe that it is like a concerted effort to uh, demonize Nick Fuentes by like a, maligning him because you can't you can't control you know your fans on Twitter. So if he has a bunch of people who are just pretending to be his biggest fan and then act as you know uh, as disgusting as possible to make people hate you, you can't really control that. But he has never denounced it, and it's not like it's a subtle thing where it's only a couple people. It's like people with thousands of followers who are highly integrated into the Nick Fuentes circles are the same ones who are posting, you know, drawn child pornography and um, talking about fucking kids. And it's just, you know, he could he could easily just say like, I "Don't do that. I don't want these. Right. I don't want to be associated with you." And he doesn't. And then his, you know, his actual fans would stop following them, and then you wouldn't be able to easily. You know, he could block them so that they don't show up on the likes of his fucking tweets. But it's it, like it's trivial to find lollycon accounts by looking around Nick Fuentes' uh, engagement.
Yeah, it's not it's not hard to find at all. Uh, and you know, I'm ashamed to say I didn't really realize. And of course, I know about the Ali Alexander stuff uh, and all that, but I didn't. And some people don't believe me when I say this. Um, but I was kind of adjacent uh, to America First, but I was never like in in. You know what I mean? Uh, like I, I was in a couple of the groups, but I would rarely talk, and I didn't really. Um, you know, investigate or, or get to know a lot of people besides like some of his, you know, top guys and some of the other streamers and stuff. Uh, so I didn't really realize that all this stuff, like you said, it's just out in the open and it's not hidden at all. And, and you, like you also said, he could easily denounce this stuff. Uh, you know, when he was having his optics war, uh, years ago, uh, you know, he denounced wig nuts and he denounced, you know, Sonnen rads and all this stuff. And we don't want that around and it's a bad look. And he could easily say that about the lollycon posters, about these pedophiles, but yeah, he doesn't uh and i don't know if that's because he's sympathetic to their position or he doesn't want to lose them or or what but uh he could do that at any time and he just doesn't do it well i mean he still keeps ali jamal around right well uh <laughs> ali jamal you know um lolly jamal is what they that's <laughs> one of his nicknames uh, well, i thought he was into boy is not yeah well i don't know uh uh you're talking about ali alexander uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's easy to mix the two up. Um, yeah, it's it's so it's so weird how many like brown Muslim men are like in <laughs> America first named Ali. It's it's like I don't know if you ever played RuneScape, but there's like a town that's near the starting region, and the joke is that every single person there is named Ali, and it's like that's the fucking America first compound is in uh, this little little Arab town in RuneScape because fucking everybody is is a Muslim carrying a <laughs> named named Ali. It's it's really strange, but he does keep Ali Alexander around. Now he's made a couple of um, you know nominal um, you know distancing statements or whatever. But Ali Alexander is in his ear every day. I talked about this um, a couple times on the show. I don't remember if I talked about it uh, when we talked. Um, but literally the first person I'm not kidding by the way. And I'm I'm not making this up. The first person who contacted me after the Florida fire there uh, was Ali Alexander, and he messaged me. And I hadn't talked to him in, in many months, probably like February or March, even before all the the scandal broke with him uh and he's like oh man you know i hope you guys can patch it up and you know you should think about this or that uh, in my mind there's just no way uh he would have done that if he's not still uh in very close contact with nick fuentes no there's no no right? chance it's just it's just too coincidental and i hadn't talked to him since what do you think about the ali alexander stuff in general um I, you know i i think that's kind of an albatross that's that's not really uh gonna go away with him I mean, he, he fucking knew and Everyone knows that. And the, the crazy thing is that he he denies that he knew, right. and then at the same time he's still around. So if he didn't know then, he knows now, and it doesn't matter. So why why should anyone believe him when he says that he knew he didn't know back then? He obviously doesn't he doesn't care. Um, right. Yeah, I, I've I've said it multiple times. I really feel like the the perspective of Nick Fuentes is that um, he wants to be successful and politically um, important, and if a few little boys get raped. In the process, that's a sacrifice he's willing to make. He, he, he couldn't give less of a fuck. Well, Josh, he basically said that. Um, there's a quote from him, uh, and I think it's from from DMs or texts or something, um, where he goes, "Oh, well, you try to you try to build something, and uh, you know you have to work with with people like this, and you know sometimes this kind of thing happens, uh, and you know yeah. it's just like, <laughs> you know, that's not the I mean, response. Yeah, go ahead. If you want to build a sandcastle, sometimes you got to do it on Epstein Island. You know? <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's really weird. Uh, and Ali Alexander, uh, I won't spend too much time on that, but uh, you know he's still doing things like promoting Cozy. Uh, and uh, there's a guy on there named UX. He was promoting his like clothing line or whatever. Uh, so he's clearly still deeply involved. Uh, you know, if I was Fuentes, I would try to get him to shut the fuck up. Um, but honestly, there's no telling what he has on Nick too. So um, that could be part of it as well. That uh, Nick's in so deep with with Ali Alexander, he really can't. Um, even if he wanted to, which I don't think he does, but even if he wanted to, this guy's probably got reams and reams of, of dirt on him going all the way back to stop the steal and before. Yeah, it's it's like that with um with Milo. It's like imagine like I, I know you like Milo, but like there's no way I would trust Milo with, his, with well, anything. Because you just know, you know instinctively that everything that you say to him is not only like stored somewhere on a computer. He writes. He has the perfect photographic memory of everything that happens. He knows exactly how to pull it up when necessary. That's well, he literally and uh, yeah, I do have a I do have a soft spot for Milo. We go way back. Of course, we fought plenty of times too. Um, but uh, yeah, I do have a soft spot for him, going all the way back to those Gamergate days. Um, but he literally came on my show and held up a hard drive in one of the more well-known moments from the show and said, "This has got dirt on everybody I've ever talked to in the history of my." 
public life. And, you know, I'm about to start releasing some of it, <laughs> right? Uh, and so, um, I don't know, the, the Milo thing, um, I wasn't going to hit on it, but I'm glad you brought it up because, uh, you know, Nick worked very closely with him for like three years. Uh, and I mean like daily communication and some of those have been leaked uh, where he's like getting tips from him on presentation and on content, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, that was fine. Uh, Milo brought him into the to the yay campaign. And then, of course, you know, Fuentes made a really bad mistake uh, in terms of turning on Milo. Uh, not not a very smart idea. Um, but all of a sudden now, Milo, according to Nick, is this Jewish pedophile. And he, he you know, he's dirty and he can't be trusted and da 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 But he was none of those things when you were working with him every day for three years. So to me, that talking point, yeah. you know, if you say something like that, uh, you know, it'd be different, right? But with him, it's just completely cover your ass type shit. Yeah, like the the pictures of of Milo and Laura Loomer like bathing in blood and shit. Like that's, like he was dating a he was I think he was married to a black man like in Gamergate days. And like these are the things that have been around for literally a decade at this point. And you're gonna you were fine with it when it benefited you in some you know roundabout way. But now that he's not benefiting you, that's suddenly a problem. It's um, I know it's it's one thing to be like Machiavellian and to have like a whatever works kind of approach to things, which sometimes you have to have. You know if you're beset by adversity you have to ever any port in the storm right you have to yeah. make do with what you have um but it, it's another to just be completely hypocritical constantly you know and uh he he doesn't he doesn't pull that off i don't think I, I, no people uh, his fans would disagree what's left of them anyways but he really doesn't do a good job of um walking that tight which is the game of politics basically is walking the tightrope of being machiavellian enough to get what you want uh from the resources available to you without you know looking like a, a blatant hypocrite to anybody with even a cursory glance at what you're doing right and his his fans like either just don't have any kind of politics and just like him or they're so blindsided by all this bullshit that they're just like in that 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 q on mentality of trust the plan yeah you know it's, it's gonna it's gonna come to fruition one day it's a it's a 20 year plan you can't rush it it's like i i don't think it is well he he, he jacked the q anon trust the plan slogan and adopted it for himself right uh and they they use that all the time um and you know politicians of course politicians lie we all know that um but they usually lie with skill right or they fudge it a little bit or you know it's it's it's, it's softened yeah. right or it goes across a little bit better Versus him, he's he's very good at just lying, right? Just off the top of his head, or you know, making up these these uh, lies to cover his stories or cover his trail. Um, but it's very easy to pick out the contradictions, right? Like it's just it's just like a complete falsehood, and you pull up another statement, uh, and it just very easily outs him. And you know, the top politicians, the top political operatives, um, are able to more believably lie <laughs> if that if you know what I mean, right? Yeah, it's a, literally a better class of criminal is the issue that he faces if he tries to run for office. Um, That's right. And he's he's an internet person, so he's surrounded by people from all over the country, literally all over the world. So you take his his audience and you divide it up across the entire planet. Very few people. What what city is he in? He's like in Chicago. Florida now, isn't he? Well, he's talking oh, about moving to Florida. Yeah, he's he's. Yeah. I think he's going to, but he's in Chicago still. I think. Good good luck trying to do anything in Chicago. But you move to Florida, and you know you have to be really careful because you know. I'm, from Florida, so right. the you know the South is very um, very Hispanic, uh, which is not going to be conductive to his anti-immigration policies. You go up north to the Panhandle, and they're very very religious up there, but they're the you know Florida is, a, is pretty anti-racist, especially the religious folks up there, because you know um, you know religious organizations don't really see race. Everybody can be saved, right? So yeah. His racism takes don't don't fly with the people where in Pensacola the, the women can't wear uh, pants uh, the ones that are very religious so they wear jean skirts so the women in jean skirts are not gonna look favorably on Nick Fuentes especially with his blatant hatred of women so he loses half the vote basically right out the the gate it's like he's I don't, I don't know I think that it is purely a financial grift at this point I think that he knows that is fucked and he's gonna move to a, a slightly better climate where the, he doesn't have to worry about the state government as much and maybe not the federal as much because uh, the state doesn't cooperate. Um, but I think that he knows that as far as um, political work, there's there's not a, there's not a chance in hell. Well, and he he hates Southerners too. Like, I mean, it's like there's all kinds of. Oh yeah, right? all, all his fucking statements, dipshit. That's God. I forgot about that. The dipshit ass shit he says about working people. Like you're not gonna get elected <laughs> if they can pull quotes on you making fun of of people who work for a living. Are you fucking retarded? 
Well, yeah, that's uh, no politician worth their salt does that. Like, I can't think of any who just absolutely denigrates working people at every turn, and and Southerners in particular. And it's like this should this should be the people you're trying to woo. Uh, you know, you're trying to bring onto your side. And I don't know if it's if it's elitism, classism, or or what, but. Uh, it's just not very smart uh, politically, um, and maybe he thinks this stuff doesn't matter, but uh, it does. And you know, he's already this Yankee Chicago guy, and he's he, you know you're not going to transplant into the Panhandle or into Florida uh, and get elected with. If, with if he moves like to Florida, I think he's going to be like even just besides the culture. The culture from the north is completely different because I, I moved from way up north uh, when I was a little kid, and I, I I got severe culture shock moving as a kid to the the deep south. Um, but it, it's not just that; it's um. The, the climate, I think he will be absolutely shocked moving from Ohio to anywhere in Florida because it's subtropical. It, it, the way I describe it is when you walk outside in Florida, it's like sticking your head over a pot of boiling water and trying to breathe. It is one of the it is painful to live in Florida during the summer. Um, so if he does try to escape to Florida because, you know, it's the, the base libertarian state under DeSantis, I think he's in for a shock. I don't think it's going to be what he expects it to be. Unless he just, I mean, he doesn't go outside, though, is the thing. <laughs> so he can just <laughs> coop up inside with AC like everybody else does and, and get, get along. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I'm used to it. I'm from Memphis, and I, I know that uh, Southern uh, slavery, right? That's a term I've used. Right? Like, it's like just oppressive. Of course, I'm in Mexico now. It's the same type of climate here uh, in Merida. Uh, and yeah, oh, yeah it, I bet. It's, it's very similar to Florida. It's very similar uh, to the deep south uh, here, where it's just like uh, oppressively hot uh, when you stick your head it's out. It's the humidity. It's yeah. the humidity. Because uh, yeah, it out here, it's like, you know, 90 degrees during the summer, but it's a dry heat. It never gets yeah. humid. So, um, yeah, I can go outside and I can be out for hours and I'm, I'm totally fine with the heat. It's just it's like with Texas. Texas is also like that where it's very dry. But you add in that fucking humidity because it's like Fresh the thing is with, with, dollars I live by Chicago. when, when something is hotter, his cheap suit and doctor on the loop downtown, you know what would happen to him? Nothing because no one would recognize who he is. Thank you for that, Fash Gordon. It can uh, carry more humidity. So not only is it more more uh, actual liquid in the air the liquid is hotter so it's it's like exponential how fucking miserable <laughs> miserable the climate is it is and um you know I, I went to i've been to vegas a few times obviously um and it didn't it never bothers me until it gets to be like 105 or 110 okay then it's it's really hot regardless um but like it can be 95 99 and it's totally different uh here if it's 99 you want to like kill yourself <laughs> right uh the, the one saving grace being here is is that it's so close to the ocean uh so there is usually a breeze going um but it's it's well, just yeah we're gonna get more white boy summer we're gonna go swimming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right now let me ask you uh of course i want to hit on a couple other things too but um uh, l let's go through some of this other stuff what about the yay uh association uh do you think that that was a um, an, an ill-fated uh, turn there, or how do you think that that's affected him? I personally think um, that that took a lot of wind out of his sails. Uh, at first, of course, uh, you know, it helped, um, but, you know, he was only with him a short time, and then he took this time off, and he's lying about his association, and, you know, he's not really with the campaign, but he's lying to his people. Um, I think that it was kind of an emperor has no clothes moment for a lot of people. And he still has supporters, but, um, you know, I've seen anecdotal evidence and, and people just flat out telling me this, um, that they were they were disillusioned uh, by that association, and he tried to, like, change. If you There's a clip where he's just like, oh, we can't be anti-immigration anymore and this and that. Of course, he tries to whitewash all that, but he was ready to just – change at all or change whatever he needed um to to be this um yay spokesman um what do you think about that whole thing well i think that now that you've said this it, it um it clarifies a thought that it had really refined in my head but i think that the way to sum up his shift in po politics is that he is becoming uh further from a a true like conservative person to being strictly religious i think he wants to get on um like a, a sort of religious grift explicitly. Because as I, as I mentioned with Florida and the religious people there is that they're very anti-racist because um, there's there's nothing in the Bible about about race. Theoretically, Jesus would save everyone, right? right. So it's it's hard to, from a biblical standpoint, it's very hard to justify any kind of immigration policies or um, racist discriminatory policies. So it makes sense from a religious, a purely religious standpoint for Nick Fuentes that he would um, drop these things to pursue a religious grift more, more uh, explicitly, especially if, he has a foot in the door with someone like Kanye West, who is religious and who also has a massive platform and a lot going for him that he could enrich himself from. So I think that with the Kanye stuff, the reason why he changed his opinion on a lot of stuff is because he wanted to pursue a more uh, a more religious ideology for for his movement, for for his um 
for his job, his campaign, his financial interest. And I think that he, what, what was really weird about the Kanye stuff is I remember in the weeks and months leading up to it, he was wearing that stupid ass fucking jacket, yes. which is the dumbest looking thing I've ever seen. And he, he was listening to the Kanye music and, and doing the thing where he had like his glass, like when the Jaden breakup happened, he was just sitting that there in the so dark with yeah. his glasses on and the Kanye music playing. I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? And after this kind of like idol worship of Kanye West for weeks and weeks, he gets his foot in the door. It's like uh, this, when this happened, I actually got salty. I'm like, this guy is such a fucking retard. He's going to get into the door with <laughs> Kanye West and make all this money from this guy. And he's not, he's, he's a retard. And then of course it, you know, it falls apart, which was gratifying to see because it was a little bit irritated <laughs> to see a good thing happen to somebody who's such an asshole. Um, and I really, I think from that it, it did, I think that to, it's sort of like he really, really wanted this thing. He wanted to be in with Kanye so bad. He really, he dressed up like a parody of him, and and worshipped him for weeks. And then he got it. He was he was meet, he was on on Alex Jones with Kanye yeah. West. He was flying around with Alex with uh, with Kanye West all over the country, and then he lost it. He got outmaneuvered by fucking Milo Yiannopoulos, and he lost it. It's like that would be so crushing to anybody. Um, well, yeah, and you know, um, the the whole Jaden thing, um. You know, that was if you go back and look at some of that stuff and, and I, I want to hit on the coat, too. Uh, but if you go back and look at some of that stuff, there were some really bizarre um, reactions around that where to me it's clear um, he had, uh, you know, some type of homosexual feelings uh, toward Jaden, honestly. Uh, and there's clips with the dumper wars and all this stuff. If you go back and watch that, Jaden's like clearly uncomfortable uh, with what this guy's saying, and he's trying to brush it off, and he throws a few barbs back at him. But Nick is basically like sexually harassing him. Uh, and then when the when the breakup happened, he, he does that really weird stream where he's just sitting there in silence with the with the big shades. Not that I'm against the big shades, but uh, he's got the big coat on and he's just sitting there. That was bizarre. But there's other comments where he's like, yeah, I would, I would forgive Jaden and, you know, if only he did this and I still love him. And like, I, I don't know, just it, it would be like, you know, you broke up with your girlfriend or your wife, for example, right? Like it's it's like just very strange, uh, his behavior in that period. Uh, and it might be worth me going back and pulling some of this stuff now that I think about it. But it was it was just really bizarre. Yeah, that could be true. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt with Jaden and say that if that was like his real friend and they were friends yeah. for a long time from the beginning and that was just like his the one guy he felt he could trust and then he randomly got shit on by Jaden, I can imagine that he was probably a little bit fucked up over that, even if it was, you know, completely whatever. Well, you know, it wasn't random though. Uh, and he had kind of sent his people out. He does this often um, where he doesn't actually want to get his hands dirty. Um, so he has his minions go out there or he signals in his group chats and then, you know, Barrettson's attacking them or the sussy squad and all these people. Uh, so there was kind of like a cold war uh, as far as he was concerned, but he had his people uh, attacking Jaden for months and he's he'd done that with others. He did that with Baked Alaska. It was happening with me. And Why I was he doing that though? Well, uh, I don't, you know, I guess they had had uh, a bit of a falling out uh, behind the scenes or whatever. Um, and, you know, rather than just come out and finally he did say something like that. But oh, I, I remember Jaden was had a girlfriend. And he was trying to yeah. move out or something. Right. Well, yeah, it used to be that Jaden was this pussy hound and couldn't be trusted because he was obsessed with pussy. And then all of a sudden it became, you know, Jaden tried to kiss me, which he never said until like a month ago on Leafy Stream. I'd never heard that before uh, in my life. Uh, and to me, that's another one of those just fabrications um, that he made up. But he does does this constantly where he, he sends out these, you know, minions of his to attack people. He did to Bay, did it to me. And I'd seen it so many times that I was like, okay, I, I know how this is going to go. Uh, and so I, I did my own thing. Um, but it, it's like he's, uh, uh, oddly enough, you know, he came up as Nick the Knife and, you know, all this stuff. But it's like he's afraid of... Um, direct conflict with with allies or people who were formerly allies and so he sends out these people who are usually kind of inept really they, they just kind of rely on swarming tactics and you know mogging people on twitter with tweet after tweet and stuff like that um and I, you know if you if you've been around for a while like i have you know i've had that happen <laughs> uh before right what right like so that okay. doesn't really say, what the hell? uh work with me i don't know it just it just feels like he he has a lot of inept people around him uh and um not really a lot of skillful people i mean just look on cozy uh itself it, it's kind of a it's kind of a wasteland yeah well i mean that was, that was the big thing that happened when you left is that um the tw the continuous content on the platform and i really underestimated how much cozy would lose by not having you streaming as much as you did because now there's like <laughs> If you go to Cozy and you're you're one guy, it's not only you don't have much of an option in terms of what Juice. you want to see because there's only a couple of people. Thank you. Especially after you left, a lot of other people also followed suit. Um, so it's basically starved. And in in regards to that, the um the Cozy thing is, is as a whole is a little bit of a waste because he has this neat thing going for him. 
And in this era of deplatforming where people are trying to do, you know, alt tech and stuff, he, he decides to just like leave it as is, not pursue it, not develop it, not not license it out, not try to actually build like a real foundation for him to to build, you know, positive conduct, you know, conductive business with other people in in the sphere. He just has this thing, and he's happy with it because he gets to use it, and that's it. He doesn't really have any further ambitions with it. Well, and I remember, you know, I was on Cozy for a while, and I remember when I first came there, I was like, this is pretty promising, right? Uh, pretty smooth site, and uh, works pretty well, right? Uh, and it's, it's closed, uh, which is a detriment in a certain way, but also, you know, it, it, it means that it's usually steady, right? Because there's not a ton of people on there sucking up all the bandwidth, et cetera. But it's kind of just stayed in that state the whole entire time, right? Like, he's never added Super Chats. He's never, you know, like, really changed the the makeup of the site uh, in any way. And it's, uh, you know, it's just kind of like he rested on his, on his laurels there. Um, and I, I don't really see that uh, going anywhere. And, and to be tr truthful, I didn't, I knew it would have an impact leaving, but it really um, just completely decimated that site. I guess I didn't realize <laughs> how, how much work I was putting in there. Um, but uh, it, it really did, you know, especially during the day, but even at night, like there's been a permanent, now he still gets his viewers. It, you know, I don't know if that number is legit. Um, but it, it, it did take a, a lot away from the site. Where, where do you see Cozy going? I know it's the Fuck Cozy Festival, so I should uh, address that a little bit. Uh, where do you see it going from here? I, I don't know, you know, how much uh, he really wants to put into this uh, in oh, terms of money. The platform yeah. itself is fucked because you have Rumble now. And it's obsolete. Yep. Rumble is what Cozy could have been if he was uh, competent. I think that too, and you know, even before I left, it was it was no accident that I was restreaming on Rumble, uh, <laughs> uh, and that I started trying to you know build up uh, a little bit over there because it was clear where the ball was bouncing, uh, and you know, cozy. It's it's shocking to me, and I guess I just didn't want to see it, Josh. Um, but a lot of people came back to my show and said that I, I just wouldn't watch you over there. Uh, first off, some of them didn't like me, um, you know, supporting Fuentes and you know being his attack dog or whatever. But a lot of people were, you know, maybe even more, just said I don't want to go to Cozy, uh, and I, I just wouldn't watch stuff over there. And then when you see these other platforms breaking out, specifically Rumble, which I, I, is my favorite one, but Kick and and other options, um, it, it's just really not viable long term. I don't think. And now you even have Beardson and people like that trying to trying to Dalton uh, trying to stream on rumble and you know they wouldn't be doing that if they didn't see some things as well yeah no i agree um it, it's it's an alienating like he has he has negative uh benefit to the people around him at this point now and, uh, this is a platform yeah and i i just don't see um i i don't see it lasting really um now let's wrap up the fuentes part with this with this point today is his birthday august the 18th he turns 25 years old uh today now how much of his rise and you talked about it a little bit earlier is like, that why you picked today yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know that yeah it is uh yeah that was an old ralph move there yeah i, I picked today for a reason um but uh he turns 25 today and you talked about earlier it was a white pill to see this young guy out there kid in a lot of ways you know 18 19 uh and he was pr pretty he well started spoken. at 17 didn't he yeah yeah he started even younger than that but when he really broke out you know like 18 19 um but he's not 18 or 19 anymore uh and um i, I think that um a lot of his early success was based on his youth right and his potential and you know he's still young 25 yeah that's um, fair but the bloom's kind of off the rose right it's like okay when you're 19 it's one thing uh but when you're 25 and it's still kind of the same the same guy um worse in, in most ways um I, I think that um that his age is starting to work against him the older he gets yeah that's a very fair assessment because you know when someone's young they can be a bit of a firebrand and they can sort of just aimlessly um test the boundaries of certain things you know as they they kind of explore the world around them that's extremely natural um, but you would hope by mid-20s early 30s that someone is uh knows the boundaries knows the things about the world that they don't like and is developing a plan to change them and like for myself because i started hosting my forum and stuff at like 20 um i i hope that if people knew me for the entire 10 years that i've been doing my my thing that people would see that kind of growth and character development as well because now i i see the issues around me and i i have ideas of how i want to change them and i feel like i can change them because i know that i want my uh, the united states to be a better place for you know any family any kids than what it is right now uh, as far and when you, i i bring that up not to like you know to my own horn i just want to say like that's sort of what people i think even if people don't don't think that actively Passively, when you look at somebody growing up, you have these expectations for their 
um, their development, even if you're you're not really aware of it. And yeah, it is. It's very different looking at Nick Fuentes right now on Cozy, kind of just sitting there, cross and upset and grumbling at his super chats with no enthusiasm or mirth or anything. Uh, versus, you know, the young Nick Fuentes actively marching around with a megaphone trying to cultivate an audience. Uh, it's, it's night and day, and you're you're looking at him, and you're kind of thinking, like, well, what the fuck are you doing? What's, what's your plan? Where are you going? What do you want to do? And I feel like I have a a worse understanding of what 25-year-old Nick Fuentes wants out of his life and what he wants to do and what his goals are than I did of 18-year-old Nick Fuentes. You know what I mean? It feels like he's gone... It, He's yeah, gone in yeah. seven years. He's gone backwards in terms of actually knowing what the fuck he wants, and that's not good. That's um, a little bit pitiable. I couldn't agree more. And uh, you know, he's he's gotten some tough knocks in the press or whatever, and you know, got kicked off YouTube. And you know, there's been some downturns, obviously, the last year or two. Um, but overall, I mean, you know, he's made a lot of money. Uh, he's he's pretty well known. Uh, he's he's got a show where he's supported very well. Just what exactly does he have to be so fucking bitter about? Really, uh, you know what I mean, right? Like I just see this guy, and he, he's just always uh, just really kind of like I said, disdainful of his audience, and clearly kind of phoning it in now compared to what he used to be. And you know, I just don't quite understand. Um, why he's like this right it's like and you're 25 right like yeah. you're, you're mid, mid, middle of your 20s uh you should be having all this fun you're you're well known and you're known for some weird shit too but like i don't know it just it just baffles me uh and i know you've been through and we're gonna change the conversation here into that in a minute but uh you know you've been through harder knocks than he has uh and you know you still keep a, a pretty positive i would say sunny usually de de uh, demeanor uh versus this guy who is just um completely I don't know, blue all the time, right? Yeah, I, well, I don't think I've ever shot myself in the foot as hard as Fuentes. There's, there's things that I've done that, that have really <laughs> fucked up and, and harmed my outlook. But Well, I just um, mean like in terms of censorship and in terms of getting kicked off places and Cloudflare and all yeah. this stuff. You know, you've oh, fuck, I would definitely. love to, to have like a cozy setup yeah. where I can just like, you know, yeah, not have to worry about shit. That would be great. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it, 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 how, do you know how much he makes per year? Um, you know, I would I would say at least a quarter of a million dollars, right? Um, really, that's crazy. I would say that, yeah. Um, knowing what I've made a couple of these years and and seeing his support, I'd say it's at least a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. You know what? I hope he does go to Florida then. I hope that he takes the <laughs> money, he goes to Florida, he actually buys like land and real estate, and maybe like sets up people that he's friends with. I if he does that and actually like reinvest this into building something with his um, you know his. His centurions—I don't know what you would call them—the most loyal groupers. I, I think that would actually benefit him. I do. In in his mentality, his outlook, his like general attitude, because I feel like he is extremely lonely. I think that's probably what his issue is—is is that he's just uh, utterly isolated from everybody. And the the problem with that he might have, and I understand this perspective, is that he's probably afraid to let more people in, because you know he he's had so many experiences with people fucking him over and, and like falling out with him and stuff that he probably is afraid to do that. Um, but yeah. If he is making that much, he needs to seriously actually reinvest that into his own life because I, I have no idea. McDonald's and DoorDash, I, I know it's expensive in the U.S. <laughs> right now to eat, but it can't be that much. Well, and you and and you hit on it there. Um, you know, he I, I I've been like that too, uh, and you know I've I've been taking a concerted effort to to break out of that. You know, in 2018 we had everybody on 2019 even, uh, and it was a it was a different atmosphere. And then you kind of get to where you want to be or close to where you want to be, and you're known and and you're killing it in a lot of ways. Um, but you start taking the attacks, right? And there's people nipping at your heels and this and that. Uh, and at first you're just stomping these people out, right? And it's just like, fuck this guy, you know, I'll crush him, whatever. Uh, and you know, you're going at all these people, but it's, it starts building up and you start isolating yourself. Uh, and you know, two or three years down the line, you're, you're completely siloed off and you know, you, the whole tenor of what you're doing uh, has completely changed. So I get it, um, but that's not the way to live. Um, and, and you also said he could, he could bring some, you know, invest in some properties and bring some of his people in, um, he could do yeah. That and he could change, you know, all this stuff we talked about, um, you know, and I'm going to keep going at him, obviously. Uh, but if he came out and made all these changes and said, you know what, uh, I'm getting rid of the pedophiles, you know what, I'm doing this, uh, I, I'm going to be more true to myself, I, I'm going to be, you know, happier and I'm going to, you know, make these changes. I mean, you, you wouldn't have as much to go at, right? Like, uh, even me, yeah. even even his other critics have to say, well, he's made some changes, right? Uh, so, well, I mean, like you right now, you're, you're doing great. So, it's, it's hard to say, you know, too much negative about you in the last few weeks. Well, thank you. Um, uh, if, yeah, and if he could, he could make the same same kind of realignments and if I, i'm being completely serious 
I'm, if he, uh, he's probably going to listen to the stream, I imagine. Oh, yeah. So he will. Here, here, here's some advice. If, if the, I, if the uh, Groiper Centurion is listening, you may also pass this along. <laughs> here's what he's got to do. Number one, get rid of the fucking weirdos on Twitter that are open pedophiles. Figure out some way to completely isolate them from your from your group. Number two, move to Florida. It's a nice place. Uh, number three, actually buy a property there. If you're making that much money, you should be you know, building some equity in your yeah. in your life. You shouldn't just be squandering on, on Taco Bell or whatever the fuck. Uh, number three, I, I think it would actually benefit him to uh if you were to bring people in if you, god just bring people in and uh set up like a live streaming thing like you could probably yeah. like right now there are some there are people in florida right now who are streaming who are in the the, the entertainment sphere who would love to to interact probably with even with nick fuentes and they're all right next to each other it's like the la of like conservatives you know yeah. <laughs> you're only a, a couple hours away from somebody else's studio so yeah but i, I mean the issue is, is that yeah, like really, just set that up, and I think that his attitude will adjust. And I think that you know you're out doing shit, and you have friends the first time. I'm sure that he'll feel better, and he'll start acting more reasonably. Um, though he he has an issue where he hates his fans. There was like, I didn't even mention this, but there was that picture of like the fans that he posted that was like I think it was that yeah that was up with you that was at Ali Jamal's castle, well his family's castle uh, there in Texas, and it was uh, it was Beardson and Wurzelroot were sitting next to me. I think Ali Jamal was there too, uh, and he said. Uh, you know, if you're not hot AF, which is hot as fuck is what that stands for, not America first in this situation. If you're not hot AF, don't, you know, be out in public. Don't show your, your face in public, yeah. it's like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, I mean, what, what just hide, like, uh, you know, um, like they used to hide uh, uh, disabled kids in the attic or something yeah. like that, right? Like, it's like, um, wh what are you even saying? Like, I, I don't know. That's something a, a, a megalomaniac psycho says. Yeah. Josh. He should get the fuck over that, you know. Or, or I mean, it feels like he doesn't know anyone in his own movement that he would actually trust to come out and do like a – you know, like a streaming house with him. So I don't know. He does. He has to get the fuck over it, or he has to make new allies that he actually likes and wants to be seen in public with. Because I think I, I get the sense, and it's hard to say because you never know how somebody actually is just based off their streaming presence. I, I get the sense that he's extremely isolated, and it's taking a, a, a genuine mental toll on him. Yeah, I do too. And I, you know, I can. I've had it happen to myself. Uh, and so, and you know, he's only twenty five. He could. He could make these changes still. You know, I made a lot of these changes post thirty five. Uh, so you know, it's it's. Never too late, really, but um, you have to want it. You have to take a concerted effort, and you know I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, yeah. Now let me ask about you. Let's shift it now. Um, you talked about how you've developed or, or how you've grown. Uh, you know, as as you run Kiwi Farms all these years, uh, how do you think you've grown? How would you tell the audience here that that you've grown as a person or, or, or shifted, uh, and, or not shifted uh, over the years? Um, I would say that over the years I've become much more optimistic and I was going to mention that in terms of like your attitude towards stuff you, you can control your attitude you can control if you're optimistic or pessimistic it, it, it is it is a choice you decide Fresh if you're going Gordon to be happy sent three dollars because... disagree Nick was yes. under some things take Ali Jamal in the cross patient <laughs> feed him a bucket of fish has a week <laughs> Ali could be causes his love thank you by the way I'll upload this whole thing after I have it on my own accord your happiness is is in your in your gray matter, and you are your gray matter, and you can control it. You can decide if you're gonna sit on stream and fold your arms and, and be a bitch to everybody who sends you money, or you can be you know a little bit more positive about things. It's it's literally a, an actual decision that you make, even if you don't realize it. If you're just doing it passively, um, so I've learned I've learned to be more positive and uh, a little bit more in control of my emotions, and I've also learned that there is a a thing to be wary of that. Oftentimes you feel like you've hit rock bottom and therefore nothing that you do matters and you can just do whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter because it can't possibly get any worse. This is always a lie. It can always get worse. The shit you say can always fuck you over even more. It never hits rock bottom. Um, and so I've learned that to to stop digging in a lot of situations and stop actively making things worse for myself. That's something else. It and then just, or go ahead, finish your thought because I, no, I don't no, think about no, that's, it. That's it. Continue. No, I was just gonna say because it's so like that. It's, I almost got a chill when you said that uh, because I've had and a lot of it's been lived out in public, right? Uh, and I've had moments where it's just like you know what, it doesn't matter, and uh, just do whatever you want, and shit sucks, and it can't get any worse. Like you said, it can always get worse. Uh, and the one thing you can control in life, you can't control too many things, but the one thing you can control is your mindset, uh, and it is a conscious choice to be happy. Uh, and to at least be positive, right, or be open to positivity, uh, even if you don't want to go all the way to being happy. Uh, that's the one thing that you can really control in life, uh, and it's it's so important. I've had you know my times where you know I just would not be happy, and I should have been happy, right? Uh, and you know I look back now and I'm like, wow, I squandered a lot of time. Uh, I squandered a lot of my life uh, in that mindset. Not to get too, <laughs> not to get too deep there, but. Uh, it, it is a, it is a real thing. Um, now let's talk about uh, QB Farms itself. Um, 
how are things going there? I, I know a little bit about the stuff with, with Hurricane. Uh, why don't you talk about it a little bit, though, so people actually understand? <laughs> so I, um, at some point, I decided that it would be best if I opened my own ISP, which effectively means that I've been granted a AS number, uh, which is just the number of my ISP, and um, two subnets. So you know what an IP address is that fits into yeah. a subnet, which are allocated in blocks. I am allocated an, an IP, a traditional, you know, four number IPv4 block of like 512 IPs. And then I have an IPv6 block, which if you've never seen an IPv6 address, it's very long. Um, that is because there are trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of IPv6 addresses. Um, I have a 32 of that. So I have um, something like quintillions of IPs that I can assign in IPv6. Um, now I've been getting black blocked by multiple ISPs at a high level, which is unprecedented. There have been issues where big networks will block some networks because there is abuse of traffic. Usually the main issue is uh, abuse of traffic. You have a compromised device on that network, which is sending outbound connections to other servers to try and exploit them, either trying to do automated hacking or through known exploits or, you know, spam mail is another one. Stuff like that, that's pretty common. As far as there is a website and it's offensive and therefore we are going to block this IP address from our network, that's much rarer, especially at the very high levels. So what has happened is, is, as I've kind of tried to find ways around this, I've made a lot of friends in the industry, and they help me out every so often. And uh, we had a uh, new data center get set up, or a new presence in a, in a data center in uh, Washington get set up uh, with some companies that I'm friendly with. And they announced my IP addresses, and um, within two days, Hurricane Electric blocked them, which is significant because uh, Hurricane Electric is, I think, the largest ISP in the world. It's it's up there. Hurricane Electric has points of presence across the entire world. They own miles and miles and miles of fiber optic cable. Uh, it's an enormous, massive company. And for one of the largest ISPs in the entire world to decide that this small ISP doesn't get to exist anymore, um, I think it's actually the first time that's ever happened. Uh, because they what they did is they blocked my entire IPv6 address, and I did the math, and um, you could I have enough IPv6 addresses where I could assign every gram of mass in the earth, 16 addresses each. And um, they have blocked every single one of them because it's assigned to me and I host the Kiwi Farms. And that is the first time in history, I think that that's ever happened at a tier one level. Now, I, I, so I've read some of your posts on that, and I do know, I do know the IP addresses. I know, uh, IV, was it IVP6 or whatever? Because I had yeah. to change my DNS uh, servers the other day uh, because something was fucked up here, uh, and so I had to change it to the Google DNS, and so yeah, I just saw one of those addresses the other day. Um, but um, I, I saw you doing a, a legal challenge there um, with the Attorney General, and I'll be honest, when I, when I saw you talking about it, I was like, man, I wonder if they'll even like acknowledge this, but they did uh, from what you said. Now, what's the update on that? So what happened is is um, the choice to go to Washington was not random. We yeah. deliberately set up shop in, in Washington because we know that they have net neutrality there. Um, now, the issue is, is that Section 230 basically allows a network to block whoever they want and be immune from civil consequences. So what the state of Washington has done is they've made criminal consequences for um, violating net neutrality. The, the catch is, is that these charges can only be brought by the Attorney General's Office of the state of Washington. So um, my ISP and their ISP both complained to the Attorney General's Office, and in response to that, Hurricane Electric replied, um, with a bunch of nonsense, uh, I think if I remember correctly, their first point of defense was that they didn't block us. They only made it so that we couldn't, that you couldn't route traffic through them to me. If theoretically there was another way around them, we could still receive traffic. So therefore it wasn't blocking, which is on its face bullshit. The other issue with that argument is that the law doesn't just say blocking. There's actually a second paragraph that says if you, uh, uh, there's specific language. It's like if you degrade the quality of a connection, right. if you do anything that reduces your connectivity to a different, uh, deliberately reduced connectivity to a specific service, that's lawful. That's also a part of this law. So it doesn't even matter. They've reduced the, um, degraded the quality of the connections by 100%. So even if it's not technically blocking by whatever legal definition, uh, it has definitely impacted the performance of the website um, to the tune of, you know, again, 100%. So they're wrong there. Um, and then there was some other shit, but it really, it was a very extremely, exceedingly weak defense. And I was actually shocked by how weak it seemed on its face. So I had my lawyer who very serendipitously, my attorney who represented me in Virginia is also licensed in Washington. Wow. So I'm I stuck, stuck with him and he's filed a complaint on uh, my behalf uh, with proper legal letterhead and stuff. And I'm again, waiting a response from uh, Hurricane Electric on that. And if they respond with the exact same defense, well, we're going to contest that. And if for whatever reason, people are saying it's Washington State, don't even bother because, you know, the politicians there don't give a shit and they're not going to do anything for the Kiwi Farms. Um, there is still recourse for this. 
in Washington State and pretty much everywhere in, in the U.S., there's a legal maneuver called the Mamandus, which is uh, Latin for it is so ordered. And you can sue um, the government and say that they're not actually doing their job and they should be compelled under the equity of law that is afforded to us by the Constitution uh, to enforce this law that, that's on the books. So you can sue the attorney general and say he should be enforcing this. He's choosing not to because my website is X, Y, Z, even though it's lawful. Uh, and therefore, I would like him to be compelled by law to um, force Hurricane Electric to plug us back in. Um, and there are some questions about that. But chances are, if it does get to that point, I have a feeling that Hurricane Electric, which is very risk adverse and very lawsuit adverse, uh, will just say, fuck it and put us back online. And if not, I will continue to just fuck around. <laughs> I will continue to fuck around forever and ever trying to put the site back up because there's literally a million and one options to do so. Um, and the funny thing is that nothing that I'm doing is like fraudulent. It's not a, a civil act that I'm causing them damages. It's not a criminal act to fuck around with my networking to find new hosts and stuff. I can do it literally, and my site's not illegal in any way. So I can literally do this forever and ever and ever, and I will continue to until either I find some magic way, a magic bullet to this problem, or um, the laws will change and the environment will change, and it's not a problem anymore. Things are just over. I'm over the, you know, the deplatforming era, and the site's still up. So either which way, it's going to happen. Yeah, and you know, I want to say this. First off, I want to apologize to you uh, and to people who are watching because um, people know the the history bet between us. I think uh, we were cool for a while. We had a falling out, and then you know all this stuff. And yeah, you know, I take responsibility for for most of that um, in, in terms of not just being you know uh, mad at you or you know whatever, not liking this guy for a certain amount of time, but I actually threw in with some really bad people uh, and. They, just because they were going against you, right? I'm talking about Keffels and Dong Gong and all these weirdos. And I didn't really like talk to them personally, but I was like cheering that on, even though I knew uh, in my heart that that actually, and I even saw you say it and people on your site. It's like, what is Ralph doing? Like, this is something that's going to kill him off eventually if, if this if these type of tactics succeed. Uh, and I knew that too, but I was just so like caught up in my own bullshit and my own emotions, acting like a woman really, uh, where it's just like, you know what, whatever hurts this guy I don't like is good. Uh, and so I wanted to apologize for that just while it's here and everybody can see it. Uh, and that was my mistake. Um, and what do you think though? Like how much of this, you know, I've seen you talk like this. Um, I mean, you're kind of doing an important thing uh, just in general for the overall uh, health of the internet and, and freedom of speech and expression on the internet. Do you, do you feel that way? Um, and, you know, it, it's impressive, really. Uh, and even when we were uh, beefing, I remember coming out and saying a couple of times, well, you know what, if he gets the site up back up now, I'm going to have to tip my cap. Like, you know, it looks like it's over. Like, I can't believe, like, how is this guy doing it? Uh, honestly, and I, and I feel like a, a lot of people um, have looked at what you've been able to, to accomplish um, almost just in astonishment, right? Because you've had a lot of uh, firepower um, aimed at you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it seems intimidating, <laughs> but... I like to say that really all you have to tell these people is no, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I don't give a fuck about what you say. I know I'm in the right. I know that I'm legal in what I'm doing and I, and I don't care. And I'm not, I, I don't know. Just no. Um, and the worst they can do is, you know, they can try to get you fired. They try to take away your shit and stuff. They go after, they go after everything they can. Um, but I don't know. I'm not intimidated by any of that. And, you know, it, it, I, I really feel it's, it's, it's just a matter of time. Um, I do it. I do appreciate the um, the kind of words and the apology. However, I, I have to know, I have to ask. Sure. Now that you're sober, has your opinion on Keffel's tranny rack changed? <laughs> what did I say? Queen Keffel's or whatever? That was Queen Keffel's. That was a joke. <laughs> Keffel's or whatever the name is. I did say that. Now, I was joking uh, about that, but I was kind of cheering it on, and so I was just going over the top. I was like, Queen Keffel's or Queen Keffel's or whatever. Um, but no, I've never been uh, sexually attracted uh, to that person. But I will say they do have some gigantic titties, which is really uh, weird. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, they do kind of stand out, but no, I've never uh, pulled a leafy or, a or a Fuentes where, I, where I was like, uh, attracted to, to the trap there. Um, but I was in it, you know, I, I did some fucked up things and, and cheered that on, even though I knew, uh, that that was fucked up and I'd had you on the show. We talked about these sorts of things even back in the day. Uh, so I, I'm aware of how important, uh, these issues are. Um, but, uh, you know, I was short-sighted and, and not just in that area, in a lot of areas of my life. And so. You know, uh, try to try to make a change, and um, you know it, it takes time. But uh, I think I'm doing, you know, what I need to do. And um, you know, it's 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 something that I had to come to myself, right? Um, and I knew these things already, but you just don't want to. When you get in a certain mode, um, you, you're just so used to to being that way, or you're so used to fighting, and you're so used to just that mindset um, that even if you know 
things are wrong or even if you know this is not the right way, um, you, you have to make the conscious decision to then act on that, right? Uh, and then yeah. say, all right, well, I'm going to stop doing that or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to apologize for these things or I'm going to, you know, go out here and try to make you know, make it better. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to realize a problem. It's one thing to realize your mistake, but you actually have to take actions to try to, to try to rectify those mistakes. So that's, that's kind of what I've been trying to do. Um, and I know some people don't believe me or they think it's a scam or whatever, but it's generally not. Uh, and the only way you can convince people is to just, uh, you know, stay consistent and, and stay honest. Uh, and so that's why I, I said those things. And that's, I've said, those you know, other things about other people too, where I was like, you know what, this was dumb, or this was, you know, made up with a lot of people, and you know, a lot of that stuff. Josh was just like super petty, uh, and you know, it, it could start off off the smallest of things, uh, and you know, then you're in a three year war with somebody, right, uh, over something that really should have never happened or should have never got there, uh, and so that that was my fault, uh, and. You know, I, I just tried to, to change course, and uh, that's really all you can do. You can't really change what you did, uh, and all those things you said are still out there, and those actions are still out there, uh, but you just have to try to build a new a new catalog of, of actions and, and statements, et cetera. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's important, to I feel, to have uh, certain principles and to not, not cross them. Because, like, like, for instance, with Nick Fuentes, even though, like, Nick Fuentes um, – has used his platform in a way that I don't necessarily approve of. Um, I always try to keep the thought of like this person should be like the platform out of my out of my head because sometimes I know it would be really easy to fuck with somebody um, through because I've been fucked with so much I know right. I know what the weak points are on everything and it's like it's it's sometimes it requires some res restraint to be like I'm I'm not going to abuse that knowledge to accomplish something that I wouldn't want to happen to myself you know what I mean so. Um, it's definitely it's definitely important to have principles and to to exercise restraint so that you don't don't do anything that you regret. I think that's true. Um, and you know, once you start bending those principles or breaking those principles, um, the first time you do it, uh, it's one thing, but it gets easier and easier, like killing somebody. And I've not killed somebody, but you know that you hear that you get the taste of, of blood, or right? you get the taste of killing. Uh, once you start bending and breaking those principles each time successively it gets easier and easier and we talked about what does and you see it there but I, honestly i live that too where it's like you know what uh whatever it takes and i don't care and if we have to go dirty here like whatever just do it uh versus you know i used to not be i always played hardball but like i used to have certain lines or certain things i would just not not touch or not go there but once you start getting on that path, it just gets easier and easier. Uh, and, you know, it, it takes a lot of work to get back um, once you get on that type of path. So, yeah, I think that that's absolutely true for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's part of that mentality of it, it can't get any worse. It doesn't matter anymore. Right. So. right. Well, yeah, it's exactly right. And that's a nice uh, callback to earlier in the conversation uh, because it, it is like that where you're just like, well, it can't get any worse or you know, whatever. I've already done this and that and the other. Why not do something else? There's already this dirt on my name, whatever. Just put some more on there. Uh, and you think in your head or you, you trick yourself into thinking, oh, well, it doesn't matter, whatever. They're already saying all this stuff. Who cares? Uh, but it just keeps building your grave, like the dirt on your grave, higher and higher, right? You just, you're just continuing to dig. Uh, and so I just decided to stop digging and uh, I'm trying to um, trying to dig out I guess you could say instead of dig deeper uh, so that's kind of been what I've been doing the, the last month and um, I'm, ha I'm happy that you came on here and talked to me uh, and set aside some time and uh, been been very kind and, and generous uh, generous Josh <laughs> I think I'll use that one one time uh, generous Josh and, and I appreciate it now what have we not talked about that you wanted to hit on if there's anything here uh, just two things um, that I'm looking at right now uh, that I'm it's kind of kind of uh, well, one's one's not new. The other is a kind of revelation recently. Uh, the first is that um, I am paying attention to the uh, lawsuit in Texas over their social media neutrality law because that's sort of a neutrality law that's um, going all the way up to the Supreme Court, I think. So I'm holding out some high hopes that Texas is going to be one of the first states that kind of uh, reigns in tech companies because so much tech is moving to Austin right now. That's actually really important that they that they do so. Um, and the other thing that's kind of a revelation I had recently that is. Um, scaring me is that in the last week there were two websites that went down um versus the soyjack party which was an anonymous image board that uh i think a lot of people might recognize just because it causes so much drama that they get their name out uh that went down and then there was a website called anon files i've heard of that one anon files yeah popular file sharing website because it doesn't require registration um that also went down and they both went down for the same exact reason uh that there was a persistent abuse of those of the platforms with child pornography and the hosts were unable to do anything about it and they gave up after months or years in an file's case trying to deal with this problem uh, it never went away and i'm really concerned because now that we look at the tech stack and i you know there's all these weak points with isps and stuff in regards to keeping content online 
I, I'm worried that even if I do find a way to keep everything up online, it will just be vulnerable to this abuse pattern, which is proving very successful in keeping, you know, shutting down websites. Uh, I feel like there is there is something happening and there is an active malicious concerted effort to shut down alternative websites, um, anonymous websites, especially uh, via child pornography. And the only remedies to to this are to either A, become a closed community that requires registration, or B, uh, to use a service like Microsoft Photo DNA, which scans images for uh, for a combination of known bad images, and they also use facial recognition technology of um, abused children to identify files that they've never even seen before um, as soon as they're uploaded. And the other one is Cloudflare. Cloudflare <laughs> scans every file you upload through Cloudflare against their database of known CSAM images. So it's it's sort of like even if the back end of the internet opens up and the stack of ISPs becomes neutral, you then have a, this very precise pinpoint of filtering out um, child pornography that becomes a serious application level issue that can shut down any website that doesn't have the access to something like PhotoDNA or, or Cloudflare. And that, that's really scaring me right now. You, you made me think of something before I let you go. Um, the future of internet an anonymity, and, and almost as long as I've been uh, in this game uh, since Gamergate, um, that's kind of been a topic. Um, do you see it holding up? Um, you know, I know there is kind of, you know, I see Jordan Peterson uh, talking about we need to get rid of, uh, you know, Anons on Twitter and, and elsewhere. And if they had their name behind this, they wouldn't say that. And, uh, you know, Elon, I think, is even doing a... Um, where you submit your ID on Twitter, which I don't even really know why. For the blue check market, yeah. I think he's adding the You saw ID. that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's um, troubling, I would say. And of course, everybody knows who I am. Well, not everybody, but uh, right, I'm a known person. Uh, and so, you know, it doesn't, it wouldn't necessarily affect me, but, um, you know, so much of the content that I've had over the years are tips, you know, anonymous tips from people or just the, the people in my audience. Um, they're, they're based around being anonymous, right? And if that didn't exist, uh, a lot of the stuff that people have enjoyed on my show and some of the stuff they did enjoy um, wouldn't exist either, right? Um, yeah. where, do, where do you see the, the future of internet an anonymity uh, going and um, how would that affect things if it did go away? Um, it's That's a complicated one because I the, the, having the stack open is a huge part of it. Um, the more, because the, the real issue is that they're trying the internet is becoming more and more centralized um if you compare the internet to how it was in the 2000s to how it is now it went from something like there being several thousand websites that consumed 50 percent of all internet traffic and then in 2012 i think it was 30 or some websites consumed 50 percent of internet traffic in 2021 i want to say last time i looked at this uh google.com and youtube.com together had more traffic than like the next 60 websites combined and was just a, an enormous majority of the entire internet. So the internet, despite being bigger and more prevalent than ever before, reaching more countries than ever before and more people than ever before, is smaller by order of magnitude. Um, and that's making it very easy to control people, control what people think, control what people see, what people say, um, and how they say it. And anonymity is on the decline, um, but I, I remain I remain hopeful that people will fight back against this collectivization of 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 um, the internet in part because I think that one thing that a lot of people value that is a common interest in you know the general public is their privacy and their right to own their own data. And people get pissy about the Kiwi Farms and doxing, but really that dox always comes from whitepages.com, which is an aggregate of marketing data that they buy in bulk. You know, they buy it straight from the DMV in some states. Um, it's kind of a fucked up situation how easy it is to buy and sell every facet of someone's personal information online. Um, and people are, are pissed about that, which is why you see regulation in the EU to control that. And um, you might see that in the US at some point as people become more cognizant of what's happening and more upset with it. Yeah, it, it could go either way. Uh, the natural trend of things, because the internet is so big, so powerful and controls politics and elections now, is that the government will want to control it as tightly as possible, um, especially with AI and the regulations regarding AI. They want to make sure that nobody does anything that they aren't aware of. And if you want to make a video of Joe Biden doing something he shouldn't be doing, um, then that, that traces back to you is what they want to make sure. Uh, but yeah, it could go, it really could go either way. They, they, they definitely want it to be gone forever. Um, but there's always the possibility that as the government gets weaker, the economy starts falling apart, people stop trusting the government, that it could fall apart in a second and things become more open again. And you, you hit on something there. I won't, I won't take it too far because I, I want to wrap it in a second. But uh, it's, a, it's a flaw of the United States. Uh, like you said, the DMV selling info, um, all these dox sites, you know, white pages, right? It's not Kiwi Farms. This info is already out there. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you try to dox somebody in the UK. Not that I've ever done that, of course. Uh, but if, 
if Carter. You, <laughs> Good luck in all, Ireland. Good yeah, luck in saying, Germany. That's just you can't do it. It's, it's almost impossible. impossible. Yeah, it's almost impossible. And um, you know, across all of Europe, but the specific countries, it's it's almost like just you can't do it. Uh, whereas in the USA, uh, you know, everything's for sale. You need a name and a birthday. That's yeah. it. You can dox anyone on in the United States with a name and a birthday. And that's a that's a major flaw. And you know, um, I really kind of think that um, you know, Kiwi Farms being there and and, and having the docs and, and you know, it's I guess it's like flashier certain certain ways. You know, somebody gets docs or whatever. But it's actually it's it's almost like a, a gray hat service in a certain way, right? Where it's like this is pointing out a major flaw yeah. uh, in the U.S. system, right? Like, okay, we'll do something. Yeah, and about that's it. why they don't legislate it because if they were to actually try to sit down and write, a, there are some anti-doxing laws, but it's effectively just yeah. a form of harassment. You can't harass somebody by posting their information online. However, as far as like general anti-doxing laws you can't host a website that has this information they can't do that because it would affect uh, internet marketing and they will never touch that because google would, would slit their fucking throat before they allow them to pass a bill that says that you can't buy and share data like they do um so yeah that's not happening yeah and they own the politicians so uh i'd have to agree with you there but uh, maybe sometime something changes on that front uh now let me ask you as as we wrap here not that you need the promo here you got a giant stream uh, on your own but uh where are you streaming these days uh mad at the internet wh wh where do you see the the future of that going uh, but uh, you know you've been really successful but uh, wh where are you streaming these days i already know but tell people uh and uh you know talk about that a little bit um, well, I, I do do a little stream where I just talk about stuff that's happening and uh, predominantly stuff that interests me on the forum. Um, and uh, it's called Math the Internet. You can find me on Twitter for the first time in years on yes. uh, at X Josh, which is surprisingly not taken, um, or on uh, Telegram at t.me slash uh, M-A-T-I on air. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really happy with my stream. I'm shocked that it's as popular as it is. I'm really grateful for all the attention and stuff. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, a, it's kind of a decompression to sit down and just rant for like two or three hours every, every couple of days because uh, there's less stuff that would weigh on me probably a lot more if I had to deal with it in quiet. Same. Uh, and I've said this on my show. Uh, <laughs> people talk about, oh, you know, I get comments where it's like, oh, you know, the kill stream helps me through the day or it helps me. Believe me, it helps me through the day. Uh, and, you know, having that outlet uh, and being able to talk to people and get certain things off your chest, although not too much uh, right you want to hold back a little bit but uh yeah it, it helps me a lot too uh and it's funny because you know you already had a successful stream but i feel like and i don't know if you have the the data on this uh but uh you know we talked about kefels kefals however you said that earlier um i feel like their war on you uh kind of grew that stream exponentially uh and kind of blew it up even further would you feel that way uh, I have no data on this because I get banned so much. <laughs> it would be impossible for me to really accurately track my viewers or when things happen. I have no idea. I just uh, start OBS, I press, press start stream, and then when it's over, it's over, and I don't really think about it. I don't get the I don't get the benefit of the analytics uh, at this point. Yeah, well, I, I, I just feel like that, that it's kind of had the opposite effect uh, of what these people wanted. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and um, well, you're, you're still here. Go that's ahead. hard to say. It's um, I, I feel like. Even if I'm not more popular than I was, I think that um, this attention has solidified this fight as being like a more legitimate thing and something that a lot of people paid a lot. Um, even if it's not like a broader appeal, I know for a fact that a lot of very important people and a lot of very important organizations watch what's happening with Hurricane Electric very tightly. Um, and they have opinions about it. And uh, the, they're not developing in favor of you know cancellation and stuff because uh, the, the main issue that they have, and, and final word but the main issue that they have is that there's never a chance of meeting these people halfway there's never a part where they just sit down and say this is the issue this right here is the problem if the site didn't do this it, it would stay up with no no complaints whatsoever it never comes to that the issue is that they don't like the people on it they don't like what they have to say and anything that they say is the actual issue is dress up in the facade to just get it taken down uh, there is absolutely no meeting these gender ideologists or whatever the fuck halfway on anything it's 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 either it's it's like a fight to the death they want you fucking gone forever Generous Josh Moon, the Kiwi Farms Kingpin. Thank you, sir, for taking time to stop by the Fuck Cozy Festival. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofer. Remember to like and subscribe.